anti-choice. He thinks abortion is murder, which first of all, don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> and when you do try it, really knock it. You know, you gotta get that baby out of there. The White House Correspondents' Dinner this Saturday, probably the worst crime against comedy since The Hangover Part 2, but it's not the only unfunny thing that happened. This month marks, by the way, the one-year anniversary of Kathy Griffin. Remember her? The single most unhappy person in America, posing with a severed head of Donald Trump. Well, today she went on The View, of course, and revoked her apology, assuming that's possible for that, and then took additional shots. Here's part of what she said. It was, a, I can't believe it's been a year since I know. this. It's, it's a year this month that no. that picture was released. Right. And um, we already described it. What year it's the, been? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I take the apology back. <laughs> and again, the son, the the son the Don Jr. and Eric, or as I called them, Eddie Munster and Date Rape. She's a lot of fun. Author and columnist Mark Stein joins us tonight. So what are we looking at? You, you have this remarkable ability to stand back and sort of see the big picture here. What are we looking at in these two appearances? Uh, I think actually we are looking at the death of comedy. Um, to, to go to that abortion joke, first of all, actually Ed Henry, insofar as it is a joke, uh, Ed actually told it better than the so-called comedian did. Um, it relies on a, uh, a sort of word inversion, don't try it till you knock it, but if you do try it, knock it out. Is that a joke that a professional joke writer should write? I mean, what's fascinating to me is, is uh, it's offensive. With that. I, I quite like a lot of sharp, edgy, so-called dangerous comedy. Uh, but this stuff is offensive without actually being funny. If you look at what she was doing on Saturday night, uh, Kellyanne Conway uh, is a liar, and then Sarah Huckabee Sanders is also a liar. And if she'd had time for so-called jokes about Mattis and Pompeo and Sessions and the rest of the cabinet, they'd have all been liars too. And I, what's sad is that this is such defanged comedy. You were talking about uh, the caravan. Exactly. Uh, a couple of minutes ago. I'd love to hear, have jokes about the caravans, jokes about North Korea, uh, jokes about President Macron. This is a smart, sophisticated Washington crowd in black tie, and they're listening to this woman using the F word, uh, making a joke about how her private parts uh, are, are, require a lot more yarn than those pink hats on the Trump parade. This is sophisticated wit for the smartest people in Washington. This is the death of comedy because there, there's nothing the left can make honest jokes about uh, except to mock Republicans as liars or uh, uptight Christian fundamentalists hung up on abortion. Nothing right. else is left. Well, I mean, it was funny in the same way that the New York Times op-ed page is funny, if by funny you mean... Mm -hmm. <laughs> sort of, you know, within the well, very no. narrow boundaries of what's acceptable. That's, that's no, the no, point. But, but, you can't be funny if you can't say things. No, but that's actually, the New York Times op-ed page is a, very, uh, is a very good example. I could never get over that when I first came to this country. There'd be four pieces on there. There'd be three dull, turgid, earnest pieces about the Bosnian war or whatever was going on at the time. And then in the corner, there'd be some twee little ninny uh, making uh, coy uh, so-called humorous jokes about barcode scanners. If you're going to be a political comedian, if this is the funniest night of the year in political comedy, it, re it requires you actually to make savage political comedy, right. not about Sarah Huckabee Sanders' makeup, uh, uh, but about serious things like North Korea and Iran and all the rest of it. It's so... The, the, I, mean, I mean, what's so absurd about this stupid, hideous, dead occasion is that uh, you book people who can't do anything but say the F word, and yet it's given the status of a sort of semi-state occasion that the president is somehow rejecting centuries of tradition if he doesn't show up for. Well, which is it? Is it a night of serious, sharp political comedy, or is it it just frankly dull, turgid people mouthing off. Well, that's right. And totally unwilling to slay a single sacred cow. If you're brave, I don't know, make a joke about something that'll offend people you live near. They would never. Absolutely. Mark Stein, thank you. Great to see you. Thanks a lot, Tucker.